and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the a week 52 last week of 2019's weekly wrap up. So technically, yes, this is the last week full week of the year 2019 so it is week 52's wrap up but there are still a couple extra days in December that I will still continue to read that you guys won't hear about until week one of 2020. So it's really been interesting. I am currently participating in the Kindle Unlimited readathon which has been so much fun. I am so happy that Jess from Peace Love Book reached out and you know asked me to co-host uh with her and eight nine nine other wonderful booktubers it has been a blast this weekend looking at um everyone's sort of books that they're reading and things that they're finding on kindle unlimited i love that only a few of us have overlapped in our reading of books and uh we're gonna get so many different opinions and stuff like that i am vlogging that so make sure you're on the lookout for that vlog later um, on in the beginning of 2020. So uh, this week, not counting, well, it is counting those books, but um, I read 15 books this week. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Even with the holiday, my boys being at home pretty much every single day, I read 15 books. So this, don't want this to be super long, so we're gonna jump right into it and start discussing some books right now. So the first book that I read last week was Secret Air Seduction by Reese Ryan. I place this in contemporary. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Stephen fans. I read this as an arc over on NetGalley and for a special project. This does not actually release until March of 2020, and this is a Black author. This book follows Darius, who, unbeknownst to him, has been... Um, his mother had an affair with uh, a guy and he didn't know who the guy was until that guy ends up dying and um, he had found out years before that he had a, like an illegitimate dad or whatever or that her, his mom had an affair. The guy that he thought was his father wasn't his father so he had a bit of a falling out with his parents. In turn, Audria, who is the female main character of this story um they were dating and they had that falling out as well so time has now passed Darius finds out that his biological father has passed and he has to go to small town Texas to find out what's going on he's lured there um under the assumption that there is going to be a fashion deal because he is now in fashion and lo and behold there. Audria is she's there and the secret is revealed that the guy um that was his biological father was actually married to the chick that or the lady that wants to do business with him lots of crazy lots of drama and stuff like that but it was a really good book I was really drawn into it and um it was almost like a sort of parent trap with some uh other some of the other characters getting Darius and Audrey back together and it was very sweet. I loved it. I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys will enjoy it as well next year. The next book that I finished was The Fake Jocks number four. Yeah, I think it's Jocks the series is, uh, by Rebecca Jenshack. I place this in New Adult. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an audiobook and a uh, PR company contacted me to review it. Uh, this is Fake Dating. Chloe and Nathan, who are, well, Chloe we hadn't met. Nathan we had met in this series already. I had not remembered him um, too much, but it was okay. That was okay. I actually kind of like that I didn't remember him from the previous books in the series uh, because there were some things that Nathan ended up doing that were like dumb. I was like, Nathan, what are you doing? You're being dumb. Um, but 
Chloe is a transfer volleyball player. Her parents sort of paid uh, for her to go to school at the old school and it was found out. So she was ousted and now she is at this new school trying to prove herself. Nathan is a big time basketball player there and they kind of hook up and start this relationship and they're like, I don't want to do the, you know, um, she's trying to get in good with her volleyball players and he seems to be away because they ended up meeting and then she opens her big mouth and is like yeah we're dating we're dating yep that that's what's happening there we, we are dating and things kind of roll from there it's a fun story and i really enjoyed it the next book that i finished was the sun is also a star by nicola yoon I place this in Young Adult. I give this book two stars. I give it one Steam fan. I listen to it as an audiobook. I also wanted to watch the movie. Um, we have it recorded on DVR, but I didn't get a chance to watch it because this book was trash! Was trash, trash, trash. Oh my goodness. I... Why? Why, why, why? And it's not even because it was an insta-love story. And I'm not talking like insta love over 24 hours or 48 hours. I mean, people, if you really think about it, Natasha didn't wake up until like six or seven in the morning to get on her way and stuff like that. And then she meets Daniel at like eight or nine in the morning. And then the ending happens at like nine or ten at night. So that's only like a 12 hour span that the two of these people know each other. What? 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 I am all about insta love. I am fine with insta love in a story. I believe in insta love, but this was absolutely ridiculous. And then to pack on all those social issues that were involved in this book, no. Didn't find it believable, and I'm sorry, but just no. Didn't work for me. Didn't work for me. I get that young people um, in their teens, in their late teens, becoming adults and stuff like that, have to deal with these social issues and stuff like that. But I d didn't believe that all that social experience and knowledge was had by these 18, 17, 18 year old kids. No, 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 no. Uh uh. Daniel felt more like he was obsessing over Natasha's uh, blackness and. Um, not really dealing with the fact that he was being, um, you know, he didn't want to be a doctor like his Korean parents wanted him to because they wanted him to have a better life than having a hair store for black people. <sighs> and then all the added extra characters drove me up a wall. wall. If you're going to like pack a uh, Insta Love story on in to like 12 hours i'm gonna need you to concentrate just on the two main characters all that extra bull that was added in there was just not necessary it was boring as hell and it frustrated me to no end Blech. the next book that i finished was she's got game gamers number one by lauren heffernan and i place this in new adult i give it 3.5 stars i give it two steam fans i read this as an arc however it has been released uh recently or the middle of this year type thing 2019 and this is about a board game enthusiast and i was really interested in that aspect because i knew it was about a gamer but it was board games that this uh character gwen ends up enjoying she is a going to a tournament she has saved enough money from her travel blog um income to start to like really go to the other tournaments and everything like that she goes through her uh local tournament then goes to regional then she goes to nationals and she makes enough money and uh plays well that she is able to go to the uh national or world level or what have you and that was fun she also has some trust issues and cody is a guy that is big on the circuit he's won the title like four consecutive times and 
the only reason that Gwen thinks that he won is because she wasn't able to go. There's some other things that end up happening, and I was here for it. I really, really enjoyed the story. It is very heavy on the board game talk, so I was a little taken back by that, which is why it kind of lost some stars. Because I'm not in that world, I appreciated the look into the world, but it was very, very, very heavy with board game talk. The next book that I finished was Unexpectedly Mated, Sassy Mates number three by Millie Tyndall. I placed this in erotic paranormal romance. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. I've been listening to this series for a little while now, and this is a Faded Mates story. So we have Jake and Nick, and they were at the same scenting um, ceremony as the other ladies in this series, and the two of them are the ones that are supposed to be together. Nick is afraid to sort of get um, involved. She doesn't exactly know what love is. So she takes one of the other ladies that has already been mated and they all go to Vegas. Well, Nick ends up getting drunk and ends up marrying Jake in Vegas. It's super hot, super sexy, and I was here for it. There are evil parents, and there is an introduction of some uh, extra characters as well that I'm sure are seen later on in the series. I then read The Mate Challenge, Sassy Mates number four by Millie Tyndall. I placed this one in erotic paranormal romance. I give this one 3.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. Once again, we have Faded Mates. Uh, Emma and Mason have been back and forth uh, with each other. However, Emma is afraid of being loved as well. She has lost her parents and her brother in a tragedy and she does not she has an abandonment issue sort of and mason and the other sort of uh clan or mates wolf pack that's what i'm going for wolf pack have you know they have already emma and mason have already sort of mated and you know but she doesn't feel she hasn't been able to open herself up to the actual mating ritual, and so there's worry there. There's an, on top of this, there's a story about um, another clan coming in, a new species that is involved into the story, and um, that definitely plays into the rest of the books in the series. And it was okay. It was good. It was good. It was very interesting. The next book that I finished was Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. I place this in a rom-com. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. And I enjoyed this. Heidi is sort of a prude and her parents are prudes. Um, they only read like Christian romance. So when... Heidi gets fired from being a teacher, which her mother thinks she should be a teacher at all times, and woo, they're a small town in Minnesota, and um, I really enjoyed this. I think I enjoyed it more because I know Andy Arndt was part of the production and the co-writes, and she narrated it and everything like that. Uh, then we have Brent, who is the next door neighbor, or the cross the street neighbor, what have you. So after Heidi gets fired. She gets another job at a recording studio. Well, lo and behold, this recording studio records or has, yeah, records romance novels into audiobooks. And when she meets some of the narrators and finds this out, she's like, what? So she decides to get some boxed wine and loosen herself up. They have needed to get the recording studio needed to get rid of some podcast uh, equipment, so she ended up taking it home, and she ends up getting drunk and records a podcast. Podcast ends up becoming um, a thing, and yeah. So she ends up ballsing up and getting some help from some narrators to sort of become her own, and it was funny, and it was, it was, it was cute. The next book that I finished was Against the Rules, Gamer 
Girls Number 2 by Lauren Heffernan, and I placed this in New Adult. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it two Sting fans. I read this one as a arc as well. It has been released, so you can go check it out. This is, once again, back with those board game ladies. This one is about Holly. You know from the last book that Holly had some difficulties with an ex-boyfriend and in this you get to see sort of that whole thing really laid out for you. Now the only issues that I had with this one was that this one was a very much into the board game because they are testing one of the ladies board game to see if it's going to be uh, viable and they have to test play it and everything like that. Well, Nathan is Gwen's dad and this is about a secret crush and it's age gap. I would have loved it a little bit more had we just concentrated on Nathan or yeah, Nathan and Holly's relationship and um, I guess been maybe a little bit sexier than uh, what, what it was. But yeah, I kind of enjoyed it and I look forward to reading the next book because um, that character sounds really interesting. The next book that I finished was, or didn't finish, was How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire and this is Love at Stake number one by Carolyn Sparks. This is a paranormal romance. I DNF this. I give it two stars. I give it 1.5 Steam fans, which now translates to two, it looks like, right there. Um, I listened to it as an audiobook on recommendation from uh, some book romance book tubers that I have friends I'm friends with and stuff like that. This book was horrible. I I don't. Ooh. It has a great premise. It really does. This vampire named Roman, he ends up losing a tooth because what he's testing this new like system thing, and he his clan or whatever they're called, his coven doesn't drink human blood, like, from humans. They drink human blood, or synthetic blood, that I... <sighs> yeah. But then we have Shanna, who is on the run, and there's all these twists and turns, but 70% of the book happens over, like, a 24-hour period, and it's all about Shanna getting... Roman's tooth back into his face and then they are trying to like protect her and if I ever hear the phrase God's blood at any point I might just rip my head my, my hair out just it every other like it was just ridiculous I couldn't take it I I DNF this at like 80 percent because of the whole God's blood thing driving me absolutely crazy um, <clears throat> you could definitely play a drinking game with it and you would be sloshed by the end of that book. So yeah, there's that. The next book that I finished, which started off my Kindle Unlimited readathon uh, weekend, was Dirty Letters by Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward. I place this in Contemporary. I give it five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook, as I said, for KU readathon, and I loved this book oh so much. Luca and Griffin were pen pals when they were kids, and then... Something ends up happening where Luca stops responding to Griffin's letters and then come to find out Luca has to go clean out her dad's apartment because he has passed away and she finds that Griffin has been writing her letters still. And lo and behold, instead of them being across the pond, pen pals, Griffin has now moved to the United States. By the way, yeah, that's he was in England. Uh, when they were kids. So Griffin is now in the United States, so she kind of checks it out and they rekindle their pen pal uh, relationship as older adults, and it was just amazing. Amazing. It was hot. It was spicy. It was emotional, and yes, just so many yeses. It was amazing, and I think everyone that recommended that book to me, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so very much. It was so enjoyable and the best way to kick off the readathon for me.
the next book that I finished was Kissmas Eve by M.E. Carter and Sarah Nye. I place this in rom-com novella. I give it four stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read it as an ebook, and this was for Kindle Unlimited Readathon as well. And this one deals with Meg and Adam. They are co-workers, sort of. She is a junior agent. He is a senior agent in a sports agency where they, uh, you know, sign athletes. And they have a conversation one day over their semi-supposed-to-be-private uh, IM system, and then they make a, you know, collective sort of um agreement to meet during the christmas party she's also known as the girl that wears ugly sweaters all the time and they've been sort of lusting after each other from across the the cube farm and building uh because they've had an attraction but they never really said anything to each other and then when they're going down to the Christmas party, they get stuck in an elevator and things happen. It was really cute, really fast, and I really enjoyed it. The next book that I finished reading was Accidental Santa by Celia Aaron, and I placed this in a rom-com, and I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an ebook for KU Readathon, and this book follows Crane, who is a cranky CEO of a department store chain, and he is just evil. He's mean. He is the Scrooge of the story, and Lindsay comes in and needs to help her roommate, who is looking to get on Broadway or an off-Broadway um, gig and she needs some extra money so she decides to become an elf well when she gets in there to be the elf the elf suit doesn't fit her for one and there is a drunk santa that's on the floor so she ends up taking the santa outfit and becomes santa for the store and she plays it off but crane is so cranky just cranky cranky crane and then he ends up doing some things that were not Lindsay's favorite so she ends up going home and there's some good grovel in this one if you're into groveling for uh, a character there's some good grovel in this one I did appreciate that the next book that I finished was the guy on the left underdogs number two by Kate Stewart uh, I place this in new adult I give it four stars I give it three steam fans I read this as an arc and it is also already available for Kendall Unlimited uh, readathon. And this book follows Troy, who we met in The Guy on the Right. And he ended up not coming off as the way that I envisioned from the first book. So that was a little weird. And um, although I really enjoyed the story behind it, um, Troy and Clarissa had a one night stand and some things were not told um, during that one night stand. And then we sort of evolved six years. There were uh, recipes included in this story um, between each chapter and stuff like that that I didn't really get. Although, I mean, I appreciated the recipes, but I didn't understand how they connected with the story. Um, so that was a little off-putting. And I didn't particularly care for how much Clarissa ended up... I mean, just... I don't want to spoil anything. How much time she put into making Troy grovel. And at, at some point probably midway I was like why is Troy trying to grovel I mean he's doing all that he can to make things right but Clarissa is just not having it and I just kind of wanted to reach in and be like girl get it get it together get it together and she was freaking out over some things that just didn't really make sense that was like really really why are you freaking out about this and the next book that I finished was The Stopover by T.L. Swan. I place this in Contemporary. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listened to this as an audiobook because it was also, it was offered in Kindle Unlimited with the audiobook version available. Yes. And so I listened to it. I 
loved the story. Uh, it ended up being longer than I thought it was going to be, so it took me almost an entire day to read it. Uh, but this story follows Emily and Jameson. They ended up having a layover lay an affair and then a year goes by and Emily ends up coming to work for Jameson. The two of them didn't really know anything about each other but I did appreciate that a year had went past and it wasn't necessarily uh it's love it was super hot. I think I might want to give it more than four stars. No, no, I'm still going to keep it at four stars. Um, but because there are some really, really sexy scenes in it, like some seriously sexy scenes, uh, the two of them like get down, get down. And they're very uh, enthusiastic about it. I really appreciated that. And the uh, final book that I finished last week was Snow Angel by Mink. And this is a Christmas novella. Um, I had marked that it was an erotic book but it's not really erotic it's just a snow it's a christmas novella i give it four stars i give it four steam fans and i listen to it on the podcast of read me romance read read me romance it was a special edition for uh the podcast to drop this book we got it in one day and the entire audiobook was done at the same time instead of being broken down into two sessions this book follows brendan and our Aerodyne, I think that's how you pronounce, I can't, I was trying to like listen and continue to listen so that I could pronounce it correctly, but yeah, I messed up her name, but they have like this, um, Christmas, uh, Christmas light war going on, they live across the street from each other, he's been watching her, she has known that he's there, and is like, oh, you're not gonna have better lights than I do. Well, lo and behold, he makes sure that he has better lights. And then he kind of, you know, kind of intrigues her over and is like, hey, come on over. I have some lights you could use. And she is kind of an introvert that stays in her house. But during Christmas time, this is like her thing. He's been watching her for like three years. And then there's some suspenseful moments that are included in it. It was fun. It was so sweet and a little bit of sexy. And I just really enjoyed that whole aspect of it. I am currently <clears throat> still participating in Kendall Unlimited Readathon for another day. So, <clears throat> like I said in the beginning, you guys will see that vlog later on this week, um, recapping the rest of the books that I have finished reading. I wanted to read 10 books. So far, I have read five, well, six even though one wasn't on my initial TBR. Um, so I need to read four more books today. I'm going to try and get this video rendered and everything like that so I can get back to the books. But I will be trying to still read Catch Him by, or Catching Him by Aurora Rose Reynolds because I have the arc of the second book and I want to get to that one as well. Sleeper by Kaylee Loring. Um, Cuffed by Kay Bromberg. And... Gilded Lily by Stacey Hart. So have you read any of the books that I have just named off? I know I gave a whole slew of books this week. Um, I hope your reading was as successful as mine was. My goal for 2019 was crushed like months ago. So I'm really excited to see what my final number is going to be for the year of 2019. If you haven't been watching, you guys should know that I have been putting out my 2019 Bookish Academy Awards nomination videos. Um, it is included in an entire playlist so you don't have to go and search my channel to see all the videos you can just go to that playlist and be able to watch all of the categories um for that there are so many books on there that you guys need to check out oh my goodness Whew. once you look you'll understand why i could not just narrow it down to one video it's so many so many amazing. I will be doing a live show for the Bookish Academy Awards in January, so be on the lookout for that announcement of when I will actually be doing that, where I pick the winners, which are done randomly out of the nomination videos. So there we go. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to your channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. All my socials are down there, all the links, affiliate links, all of that. 
down in the description box. Make sure you're checking that out. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later. Thank you.